So what is your ambition then? Is it to be the government? Or is your best I, ambition just simply to be able to influence somebody else's I, government? I think that UKIP is going to fundamentally change British politics in ways that it is very difficult pr to, to predict. That sounds like you don't think you're going to be part of a government. Uh, we may well be after, after 2015. Who's to say? But you have to understand that most people in politics are motivated by rank and position and, and who they can be. We in UKIP are motivated by, firstly, wanting to get our country back from Brussels, to have a nation we can call our, our own, and then to do all the things you can do as a free country, and a very good start would be controlling our borders. But how do you get to that point? That, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Do you think you can realistically be part of a government, or do you simply rely on influencing, pushing the Conservatives in, in a different policy direction? What happened last night wasn't a political party winning a few votes just to influence government or influence national debate. It was a party actually striking out and saying, we're here, we're serious, we're real, and we're not going away. And you could be part of a government. Let's come back to that That point. is perfectly feasible. OK, so what would you like to see? Well, let me put it in a different way. The Conservatives, as you know, are saying, when the time comes, when people really have to make a choice, are they going to end up with a Prime Minister Cameron or a Prime Minister Miliband? That's when all these UKIP voters will come back and the UKIP vote will evaporate. What do you say to that? It's very interesting. I mean, looking at Lincolnshire last night, where the Tories were putting out the message, vote UKIP and you'll get Labour. And what happened in Lincolnshire was they voted UKIP, and what did they get? They got UKIP. All right. But nevertheless, when it comes to 2015, this is going to concentrate minds much more clearly, isn't it? You're voting for a government at that point. Isn't the Conservative case correct that basically at that point your vote will evaporate? I think so. People are not voting for us. This isn't a midterm protest. This isn't just an attempt to influence Mr. Miliband or Mr. Cameron. This is people rejecting wholesale the establishment, the career politics of this country, and looking for a new politics, a politics based on conviction, and a politics based on the idea that it's about time we started to put the interests of our own people first. Are you going to stand in, in the 2015 election? Oh, yeah. You're going to, where are you going to stand? I haven't decided yet. OK. Where, well, you must have an inkling. Where do you think I that? Where, where, where? I have spent months on the road getting UKIP ready uh, to fight the elections. Uh, I'm delighted with the results last night. I haven't had time to sit down and think calmly about it. But yes, I will be in charge in 2015. Um, what about an electoral pact with the Conservatives? Is that a possibility? Well, who's to say what will happen? But uh, would, would that be something you would consider, though, at the 2015 well, election? I mean, again, you know, I, I wouldn't consider a pact with anybody unless having that pact brought us closer to the main policy objectives that UKIP stands for. You know, we wouldn't just do a pact for personal gain. We wouldn't do a pact because we want to be in government. No, but if there were a lot of Eurosceptic Conservative MPs, would you be prepared to say, OK, those guys are fine, we'll, we'll come to an agreement with you? Well, I think it's very unlikely, um, under David Cameron's leadership, that any deal between us and the, and the Conservatives... So is that a deal-breaker? Oh, I think so. I mean, he's been very rude about us, very dismissive of us. And he, of course, believes in wind turbines. He thinks gay marriage is a huge priority. He wants the foreign aid budget to go up. But we find it a bit difficult to support that agenda. OK, another point. A lot of people are saying your manifesto, when it really becomes ex under examination, falls apart. Let me take one point. You made a lot of play about the High Speed 2 link. Your manifesto, last time round, had plans for three high speed rail links. What's going Not on there? Not for HS2. We supported the extension of HS1. We support better rail networks in this country. Do you know it takes longer to get from Penzance to Paddington now than it did in 1914? But three high-speed rail links never, all the same. We have never, ever supported HS2 on this proposed route and at this price. No, but three high-speed rail links, so people in other places will be facing the same sorts of problems that you've been playing no, because, on in Buckinghamshire and no, elsewhere. No, because much of it will be upgrading lines that exist already. The madness of HS2 is we're building a completely brand new line through the middle of Virgin Country. In Kent, where HS1 has been built, it's been built parallel to the existing railway. That is sensible development. I think HS2 is madness. Okay. How far do you think you can go? I don't know. But I do honestly believe that we are going to change the whole nature of British politics. I've got a final question. How do you pronounce your name? I've heard what it pronounced differently. What do you park your car in? No, how do you pronounce your name? Well, what do you, no, 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 what do you park your car in? In a garage. Right, so you'd say Farage, because you're a southerner. But if we were in Manchester, you'd say garage, so you'd say Farage. So you're happy to be Nigel Farage doesn't in matter. Manchester? Doesn't matter a bit to me. <laughs> Nigel. Nigel. Long as they vote for me. <laughs> Nigel Farage or Farage, thank you very much. Thank you.